be sunny in 70 now, did you? I'm in your town? No, I hope not. Uh, we've been watching the storm uh, come down from Canada all week on the Weather Channel. We've been talking about it extensively and some of the impacts that we have not only here in Chicago but also across the entire east for that matter. So uh, this isn't too surprising. This has been this has been a pretty good blow. I just got uh, an email. Uh, you guys may or may not know this, but the northbound lane of the curb at Oak Street Beach has got overwash on it now from, from Lake Michigan. So we got some good waves out there. Uh, the Michigan City Marine platform gusted to 67 miles per hour. Both airports have had gusts at or around 50 miles per hour. Uh, it snowed five times on Halloween at O'Hare, but this is the first time we've had measurable snow, which would be 0.1 inches or greater. So that's an interesting tidbit. Plus, we've had brutal wind chills, you know, with the gusts. We've had teens and 20s, so uh, welcome to winter, everybody. <laughs> so, where do we go from here? terms of transferring into Sunday night. Well, the good news is things are going to improve. Um, but the temperatures are going to stay pretty cold, I think. And, and I'm, what I'm going to forecast for is really what's happening up 600 feet, not what's happening down here on the ground or at the lake, because that's where Nick is going to be up at 600 feet. So what we're looking at, I think, are temperatures that are going to start off uh, when he does his first walk in the low 40s. They will drop down into the upper 30s. We will have winds. I think sustained at 15 to 20 miles per hour with some higher gusts. That's going to bring the wind chills down to at or below freezing. So it's, it's going to be cold up there. And I think that's how we're, we're going to play out the, the entire evening. So that's how the weather forecast looks. And uh, I'm just glad it's not today but, uh, that this great man is walking. But it will be Sunday. He will make us proud. As a matter of fact, let's find out what's on his mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Belinda. Hello, everybody. Wow, what's going on in Chicago today? <laughs> Look at all these smiling faces. I have to agree with Jim. I'm glad that I'm not walking today, that's for sure. Uh, you know, leading up to the Grand Canyon, I went out and did a photo shoot uh, in a commercial. We filmed a commercial about, oh, I think it was six weeks before that walk. And I remember going back to the hotel that night and calling my wife and saying, the winds are unbelievable today. There's no If the winds are like this, there's no way I can walk the wire. And she said, you know what, honey, don't worry about it. The winds are going to be perfect. Everything, the weather's going to be perfect that night. You have no reason to be concerned. Um, you know, you're, you're six weeks out, don't worry about it. She was absolutely right. Um, that's one of the challenges of what I do is it's easy to concern, start getting worried early. You know, today I could look out the window and, and go, wow, how am I going to walk in this? Um, but I am pretty calm and pretty confident in the fact that the weather is going to be uh, it's looking promising. I actually like the weather that uh, that Jim just called out, and uh, and I would be thrilled if the weather was was like that. Um, it is an honor to be here, um, skyscraper live in Chicago. Another dream of Nick Willand. I I say it often. I'm living my dream, um, and uh, to be right here in this beautiful city um, is is just an honor. It's just extremely exciting. I, I look up at those buildings, and unlike contrary to what you guys would think. Uh, that it would freak me out and stress me out, I get excited. You know, the fact that here I am uh, fulfilling another dream walking between uh, this time over this incredible city, over this incredible river, uh, over uh, Wacker Drive, um, and uh, I'm just very, very excited to be able to do something that I have never done before, walk up a 15 degree incline. Uh, my engineer just sent me a picture minutes ago of that cable that is fully tensioned at this point, and um, I get goosebumps thinking about how blessed I am to have these opportunities. Um, and, and again, thank you guys for being here. Um, am I taking questions? You can take questions. Awesome. All right, then I'll shut up and uh, take questions. Um, you know, preparation started when I was when my mom was six months pregnant with me um, and walking the wire. Um, I started walking the wire younger than two years old and have trained my entire life for events such as this. Um, specific training for this event happens in my hometown of Sarasota, Florida at a beautiful park called Nathan Benderson Park where the public is allowed to come and watch me uh, watch me train. And I train on a cable that is uh, that was rigged starting at the ground up at a 15 degree incline, the same distance between uh, Marina City West and uh, the Leo Burnett building. Um, so it started on the ground and went up about 90 feet above the ground. So many people think, oh, he's training, so it's in a safe environment. Well, no, that's not true at all. 
um, actually uh, I've lost several family members from only 30 feet above the ground. So uh, walking up 80 feet in training. It wasn't as though the first day that I walked out to that training rounds and looked at that cable that I thought, man, am I going to be able to make it up to the top of this wire? Um, I trained and prepared my entire life. Uh, I've done a lot of training on inclined wires, but never this distance, never this height, and never done an inclined walk in public. Um, so, uh, but again, I knew that I'd be able to make it from one end to the other. It was, it's just, a lot of it is about training for um, endurance, uh, making sure that I have plenty of strength. You know, um, my backup plan, if anything goes awry, if the wind gusts get very strong, many of you know, Jim definitely does, 48 mile an hour gusts while crossing the Grand Canyon, which is quite a bit of wind. Um, if it gets bad enough, I go down to the safety of that wire and I grab onto that wire and wrap around and I'll wait for help. I've got amazing rescue teams. Uh, my incredible rigging team, a lot of them are my guys, and then O'Connell um, Electric is doing our rigging, who did this, did my rigging for Niagara Falls and the Grand Canyon. Uh, but I have an amazing rescue crew that can be to me within about 90 seconds anywhere on that cable. I've trained to hold on to that cable for upwards of 20 minutes. So um, that's how I can go out there so confident as well, knowing that that cable is always a safe haven, whether I'm over the streets of Chicago or in my backyard or in my hometown of Sarasota um, at Nathan Benderson Park, that cable is always at my feet and I can always reach down and grab that and hold on. And that's the short answer. So how does your, uh, you're talking about your physical preparation, I'm, I'm curious about your mental game. You know, it, they kind of go hand in hand, to be honest. My mental preparation um, starts while I'm training on the wire in the backyard. You know, I'm putting myself over the streets of Chicago. I've spent a lot of time on the rooftops of these buildings, um, sort of meditating, if you will, getting used to, getting comfortable, acclimated with, with the rooftop. Not so much the weather conditions, because those we know they change from one day to the next, but more acclimated with the surroundings. Um, and that is a big part of my training, is as I am walking on that cable, um, training, I'm putting my mind over the city of Chicago. And while I'm walking over that cable on Sunday evening, I will be thinking about my training back in Sarasota. We simulate everything, the pitch of the cable, the distance, the length. I trained with wind machines as well, just to elaborate a little more. Uh, wind machines, we use actually airboats that create wind for us. Uh, they can create winds up to 120 miles an hour. I've been on a wire before. Now that's a sustained wind that built up as I was standing there. Um, and 90 mile an hour winds very often I train in, um, consistently 60 mile an hour winds. And when there's a tropical storm or a hurricane coming into my hometown of Sarasota, I don't go surfing, I go onto my wire and start training. Um, it's just part of my training. Again, it's what I love to do. It's hard for people to comprehend why would this guy do what he does. But it truly is my passion. My family's done this for seven generations in 200 years. And my great-grandfather said it best when he said, life is on the wire and everything else is just waiting. For my family, that's true. I've got 16 family members that currently walk the wire, um, not including my three kids. They do it, the 16 do it in front of public as performances. But um, my three kids also walk the wire. Um, they are 11, 13, and 16. Um, none of them have any desire, if you ask them, to carry on the family tradition. However, they are all incredible on the wire. And it's never, there's never been a time that I've said to them, go in the backyard and start playing on the wire. But to them, it's fun. It's what we've done as a family uh, for generations, and it's what we enjoy doing. It's what we have fun doing. We actually have chicken fights on the wire. We'll get in the backyard and try to knock each other off. Now, mind you, it's only a couple feet off the ground, but it's an incredible way of training. Um, part of my training for blindfold was only about three feet off the ground. Uh, I started, uh, the whole dream of walking blindfolded came about um, because I was having LASIK surgery uh, last year. After I got off that cable at the Grand Canyon, my eyes were very dry. I was wearing contact lenses, and I thought, you know, I need to do something about this. So I decided I was going to have LASIK surgery. And uh, leading up to that surgery, I, you know, I, I think we all have those concerns um, or fears, maybe, of um, what, would, what, what if something happens to my vision during this process? And, um, and I thought, what if I lost my vision? I had a great aunt. Her name was Angel. And she had cancer, and she lost her leg. Uh, it was removed and she had a prosthetic leg and she continued to walk the wire until she passed away. And I thought, I wonder if I lost my vision, if I could carry on this passion of what I love doing. And I started training in the backyard with my eyes closed, walking back and forth. And then eventually uh, my wife practices with me, my mom is out there, my kids. And I said, hey guys, I'm going to just walk and I want you to sneak up and just push me every once in a while. So they would do that. They'd sneak up and push me. And then I said, well, now I want you to make it worse. Shake the wire while I'm up there. And they'd sneak up and shake the wire. Uh, and then they'd sneak up and they would hit my balancing pole and then several of them would do it at the same time to the point where I was amazed. I was like, wow, I can't believe that I can 
that I can still stay on the wire through all of this. And it built my confidence to where I knew that I would be safe making this walk blindfolded between Marina City Towers. I am uh, going with my family to the aquarium um, and enjoying the city of Chicago. Um, as far as eating goes, I eat a little bit lighter leading up to an event. Uh, lots of fruit and stuff, but um, nothing really special. You know, again, people think there's something hysterical or magical behind what I do. I've done it my whole life. It's the same as you guys going to work and reporting every day. This is just what I do. Um, yeah, there's different situations that make it more challenging, and I, I love pushing myself. I live by three words, never give up, and uh, hope that what I do inspires people, not necessarily to walk a wire over the Chicago River or between the Marina City Towers blindfolded, but that it inspires people to continue to pursue their dreams and their passions, even though uh, there are countless naysayers in my life that say, you can't do that, you're foolish, you're crazy, what are you doing, what are you thinking? We all have those people in our lives, but I continue to pursue my dreams even without them and continue to fulfill my dreams. First person in the world to walk across Niagara Falls, a dream that took changing two laws in two countries that were over 100 years old. Had to go in front of legislator, uh, all the legislators, it had to go through Senate, uh, the Assembly, and eventually Governor Cuomo had to sign legislation saying that I was allowed to do that walk. Um, thousands of people said it was impossible, there's no way you're going to do it. And I continue to pursue my dream because it was a desire that I had in my heart. And I hope that what I do encourages others to not give up on their dreams, whatever they might be. Um, it costs a lot of money to put a net up. There's a lot of work involved. <laughs> no, you know, it's it's um, something my family for generations we have walked without nets. It's just the way that we have we have performed for generations. Um, it is hard for others to comprehend, but I really do. I'm confident that that wire is a safe haven and a net for me. Um, if Jim comes out and says those gusts are going to be so strong that my safety crew says, which my father's my head safety guy, says, you know what, it's too strong, you're not walking, then I just won't get on the cable. Of course, we don't know the weather and it can change rapidly, but these guys are pretty darn good at what they do nowadays. And they can tell us in advance a, a ballpark of what those gusts are going to be. You know, if they, if they break that threshold, then I simply will postpone and won't get on that wire. Um, but that wire is a safe haven. The reason why I talk about winds and gusts is that would be the only thing that could actually take me off of that wire and over. It takes a lot of wind to pick a 200-pound man up and throw him to the side. Yeah, it'll push you to the side, but that's why I have a balancing pole. That's what counters that balance. When I get hit with a gust of wind, um, I can counter that. When you're on a sidewalk, you feel 50, 60 miles an hour, and you're like, wow, that really pushes me. But it does push me with that balancing pole, but it, it basically buys me time. I have something to work off to, to stay balanced. Nick, what's the most challenge? What's the most challenging moment of a walk at this distance? Is it the beginning when you're first getting on the rope? Is it the middle? Is it the end? You know, it is. Um, it's definitely intimidating. You stand on top of Marina City, you look uphill to Leo Burnett, Burnett, and you go, "Wow, that's intimidating." Um, so I would, I would say the start. Um, but I'm a very driven person, and once I get up there, my mind will be made. And actually, my dad, that's why he is my safety guy, because he will have to literally grab me and say, no, you're not getting on that wire. Because I get to a zone and a mindset, and I'm going to make it from point A to point B, whether anyone wants, likes it or not. So that's why he is that guy that makes that final call to say, you know what, Nick? You're not getting on that wire. We're going to wait. We're going to hold off. What is that threshold as far as wind does? Just so people know if it will get canceled. You know, um, I, I got hit with 48 mile an hour gusts over the Grand Canyon. I've trained in 60 mile to 90. I've just talked about that. Um, but I, I believe he would probably cut it out around 50 miles per hour um, with gusts of 50, not consistent wind, but gusts of 50 to 55. And rain, I think fog doesn't matter? Fog and rain doesn't, as long as I have some visibility, which I say that, but I actually in training walk this entire incline with my eyes closed as well, just for practice. Um, so. Um, but I'd prefer to be able to see for that walk. It's much more challenging in the sense of uh, it's uphill, the way that I balance, it kind of changes everything as I walk, I'm much more strenuous. I feel aches and pains in my back and areas, muscles that I never felt before walking the wire. Chicago. Yeah, you know, um, I love Chicago. I love the skyline and um, it's the Windy City, and, and yes, I've heard the arguments that it is about politics, not about weather, but that's really what attracted me to this city in the first place was the title, The Windy City. I love to continue to challenge myself and push myself to be better at what I do, and what better way to do it than do something in the Windy City, um, uphill at a 15-degree incline, and then 
do the next walk blindfold. I hope not, but I believe not. No, I, uh, everybody has seemed like they've jumped on board and they're fully supportive of this walk. We've had no uh, negative comments whatsoever as far as um, as far as having to wear a net or a safety or, or use a net. The city of Chicago has dance with the jump in the I will. I'll be speaking to uh, my Father God for sure, which I do all the time. That's how I find my a lot of my uh, confidence and, and my peace. But um, I'll be speaking with my Father. He'll be in my ear in an in-ear monitor, um, hopefully not annoying me too much. But uh, also the anchors as well, um, Natalie Morales, Willie Geist, and maybe even Jim, we'll see. Although I like to keep him. He's the weather guy, and I don't want to hear about the weather. Just let me get across to the other side. How long do you think it'll take? Um, you know, it, it depends a little bit on the weather. Uh, it'll take probably longer if the weather is nicer, to be honest. I know that sounds crazy, but I'll be able to enjoy it more and relax up there and spend some time up there. Um, you're probably looking at uh, about a 12 to 15 minute walk for the first walk. Um, it could go a little bit quicker. It's really, again, it, it really depends on the weather. If the weather is, uh, is not playing nice, then I will get my butt across that wire as quick as I can. I, I, I gotta ask, uh, what do you do if you get an itch while you're up there? Um, <laughs> depends on where the itch is, um, but normally I scratch it. Um, I, I've done this my whole life. I know it's hard to believe, but you know we have the world record for the eight-person pyramid on the wire. It was the first world record I ever broke. It was with seven of my friends and family members. We do a lot more than just walking wires. Uh, everything from riding my, you know, I have a world record of a bicycle on a wire to uh, jump roping on a wire. You name it. So it's not as though. Um, the only thing I can do is get on that cable, grab a pole, and walk from one end to the other. There's a lot more that I'm able to do um, when the conditions are right. Have you ever had a dangerous distraction, and what was it? Um, you know, I, I've i trained uh, in training. Uh, everything from footballs would be thrown at me to pine cones to you name it, just causing distraction to, uh, you know, my dad or mom will sneak up and shake the wire. You, my mom is more rough than anyone on me, for sure. There's no question. Um, I was walking blindfold down low, and... Um, she grabbed the wire and ripped it out from under my feet. I mean, literally pulled it out from under my feet. That builds confidence in me, but it builds confidence in them as well, going, okay, well, I pulled the wire out from under your feet, and you still caught it. So I know that if that happens over Chicago, you're going to catch that wire. Now I got all scraped up and bruised and wasn't thrilled about my mom pulling the wire out from under my feet. But And, and that wasn't her intentions, to pull it out from under my feet. It hurt me, but it was, I want to know that he's going to be secure. My wife, the same thing. My father, they, they test me by pushing me, by shaking that wire, because they want to be confident. And to be honest, I need to know that they're confident in me. If they lose confidence in me, uh, if any of my wife, my kids, my mother or father said, you know what, this is your last walk, that's it, no more, I wouldn't do another walk. It's just, just being honest with you. This is what I love to do, but I, I cherish and love my family more than, definitely more than walking a wire. Um, so it helps build confidence in them as well. But as far as distractions go, um, I've been stung by a bee before on a wire. Um, I've had birds land on my balancing pole before. Um, birds land on the wire all the time um, while I'm walking. Um, they usually look at me funny, like, what are you doing up here? But, um, but yeah, all sorts of different distractions have happened throughout my career um, to not only me, but my family as well. What am I afraid of? My wife. <laughs> And she hates when I say that. Thank God she's not here. She's shopping, so she'll be happy when she gets back. You actually stopped, I guess on Sunday, you stopped and looked at the people and absorbed that moment. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I will. Again, depending on the conditions. If I can enjoy it, yes, I will. If the weather conditions are rough and I'm going to have to work every step of the way, I'm going to be so focused on what I'm doing that I won't be able to. But my hopes are that I'll be able to enjoy it. I absolutely love entertaining people. I started performing in front of a live audience at two years old. I was uh, a clown that came out in a pillowcase on another clown's back and he dumped me in the middle of the ring and I did a few things. But that was my, my introduction to entertainment. Um, that's one of the... Um, the beautiful things about this walk over Chicago is that there will be a huge live crowd. Over uh, the Grand Canyon, there weren't a lot of people there. There were very few because it was a very uh, remote area and wasn't safe for the general public. So um, I'm excited about that, the fact that there's going to be thousands of people down on the street cheering me on. I, I absolutely love that. People often say, I actually read the Marina City has put out a bulletin saying that they can't barbecue, they can't. And I said, that's no fun. I was going to stop at barbecues on the way up. I mean, that was what it was about to me. But. Um, 
uh, yeah, there were all these restrictions about making noise and such, and, and, and I appreciate that, but we're in a city, and I expect to hear sirens, and I expect to hear cars, and I expect to hear crowds screaming, and, and you know, um, that's part of what I do. All, both positive and negative, you know, there's a lot of negative people out there.